Well, time for the April pickups videos, and as you can see, this month we only got one. I said in the last video I was going to be cutting back on the collecting, but I couldn't resist picking this up, even though it is pretty expensive. It's a Max Factory Figma, even when used, like this one is, they can command a hefty price. But I had to, because it's Hikaru Shido from Magic Knight Ray Earth. This spunky little girl and her two friends, they were my gateway drug into anime when I was 16 years old. It wasn't Dragon Ball Z or Sailor Moon or anything like that. Not even Pokemon, no, it was Magic Knight Ray Earth. These three girls getting whisked away to some fantasy world and cool shit happening. It's like getting cool powers and stuff. It, it, was, it was good stuff. I'd never seen anything like it. How did I get into it if stuff like Dragon Ball and Sailor Moon passed me by? Well, I remember in one game magazine, EGM114, they were, did a review of this, which is now a game that commands a hefty price, too. And I was thinking, oh, oh man, this is the last Saturn game in the U.S.? I can better check this out. And when I did research, I realized that it was based off a Japanese cartoon, and a friend of mine in high school, he had the first volume of the translated manga. And... <sighs> One thing led to another, a local comic shop. They had the VHS tapes for Magic Knight Earth. Hey, remember that stuff? You remember remember tapes? Be, please be kind, rewind. I don't have those tapes anymore. I gave them all to a friend many, many years ago, but I do have it on DVD both seasons, and I need to get it on Blu-ray too, but that's also commanding a hefty price nowadays. Also, I'm not sure if I should be mentioning this, but Hikaru Shido was also my first anime crush. Yes, I know she's 14, but by when I got into the series, I was 16. It wasn't weird or anything. But, in many ways, she's still my favorite anime character, and her anime is still my favorite after all these years. And now, I've got what I've always wanted, a great figure of her to put on my shelf. I had some Hikaru stuff before. In fact, let me show you real quick. This is one of the figures that came out long, long ago, back in the mid-90s, and this, this is what I had before. Really not much. I mean, you can move the arms around, you can move the legs a little, and you can't even turn the head. You can barely move the ponytail, I mean the braid, whatever. But yeah, this is what I had to settle for for so, so long. And up on the top shelf, I do have this the break statues of all three Magic Knights. I have a separate video that I did for opening those long, long ago. I'll put a link in the description, but never a real high-quality action figure of the head honcho of the Magic Knights. The magical girl that gave Sailor Moon a run for her money. Now, finally, it's mine. She's a short little thing, though. I mean, let me do a little comparison. Here's Sailor Moon again, who's basically, what, five feet even? Which makes sense, because the thing with Hikaru Shido, she's an eighth grader, she's 14, but she's so short, she's mistaken for a grade schooler. So yeah, it's good to see that it reflects that, but she's still taller than, you know, Mega Man. And by the way, this isn't the SH Figure Arts one, this is the Nelnet one. Alright, we open up the box, and since we've only got one figure we're looking at, let's make this a nice in-depth review for one of my favorite characters of all time. Unlike that pitiful thing we had back in the 90s, she's got good head movement. One thing the other one has over this one is... Uh, he can't quite... Not as much good movement was with the hair braid, but he can get it out of the way for a better arm and head movement, and he can even twist this part so the bow's always facing forward, which is nice. As for arm movement, this shoulder pad can kind of get in the way. Also, another little thing, I like how it's the shoulder pad to signify this is the second season, where they go back to Sephiro and things are even tougher. I like that. The shoulder pad can be a bit cumbersome, but not too much. Can you... She can lean over like that. It has a nice... Sort of like the shoulder pads on Princess Zelda or Samus Aran. It doesn't restrict movement too much. Of course, 
her right arm is much more movable, and it's a good thing she's right-handed. She uses her sword with her right hand. Right, the wrist movement, elbows bend. Thankfully, the skirt is a lot harder fabric than... No, not fabric, plastic. Blah, blah, blah. Plastic than what you see on comparable stuff like for the Sailor Moon figures from SH Figure Arts, but you still get decent leg movement. Not hindered too much, and the knees bend, the ankles bend. It's a decently poseable figure all around. I really can't complain too much about him. I can nitpick about how the shoulder pad kind of restricts movement of her left arm, but that's that's kind of to be expected. Same with the skirt kind of restricting leg movement. It's like, who cares? This is what I've wanted for so, so long. A good figure for her. And now, I thought that with those three break statues I had, that'd be it for the Magic Knights. It's kind of why I held off on trying to get my hands on any of them for so long, but now that I got one, I gotta get Umi and Fu as well. I mean, this is just great. It's like, I like, oh, the sh short's kind of shiny. And she looks so happy, she's smiling. But let's get her back on her stand. The thing I don't like is she comes off the stand too easily, for my taste. I really don't use the Figma and SH Figure Art stands all that much, but here's... But for the purposes of this review, I kind of had to. She doesn't come with many interchangeable hands. The uh, Okay, this one's still stuck on. It's an alternate left hand, and... What else we got? Okay, we got another hand, so she can hold her sword in both hands. This one's kind of closed. And then we got tightly closed fists, and that's pretty much it. Put those back here for now. And like with most SH figure arts and Figma stuff, it comes with alternate faces. You got this cute Happy face. Okay, come on, come, come on, ah, come on, come on, come on. We got her all pissed off, and uh, they even there was like some some cute scenes where she grows kitty ears. She briefly becomes a cat girl for comedic effect. They even included that, which is a nice touch. And now for a little fun, posing Hikar with some of my other figures. Here's my favorite pyrotechnic from when I was a kid, with my favorite pyrotechnic from contemporary anime, Natsu Drag Neo, Fairy Tale. Yeah, I've made it clear I never cared for One Piece or Naruto, but Fairy Tale, I'll take it. So now I finally got these two little firebrands back to back. Nice! And now for shits and giggles, here's Hikaru having a sword fight with Princess Zelda. Umi would actually be the more fitting one for this because she's got a rapier, the same kind of weapon as Princess Zelda. Umi was the fencer. But still, this looks pretty awesome. I even put on Hikaru's angry face for ya. Yeah, this is cool. And now for a more dramatic pose. Here we have Hikaru Shido trying to get the jump on Deadpool. Yep, here's my 80th Marvel Anniversary Deadpool again. Funny thing is about this, Deadpool would probably be the one that Hikaru would take the most liking to, because he'd annoy the crap out of Umi. Fu would consider him just rude and crude, but Hikaru would probably think of Deadpool as just a big funny goofball, and most of his dirty jokes would just go right over her head because he's so innocent. Yeah, Hikaru and Deadpool, they'd, they'd be good friends, you know? And they get along just fine. Oh boy, this one could be bad news, because Hikaru chiefly fights with a sword when she's not using her magic, and Raphael's size are meant to disarm people with swords, and ooh boy, this could be trouble. And it's fitting I ended on this one, since Imagine Nightworth is my favorite anime, but when it comes to my favorite western cartoon, that's gotta be Ninja Turtles 2012 now. So yeah, here we go. Get a close up with her angry face, and holding the sword with both interchangeable hands. So yeah, this is a fun figure to have, and when I finally get Umi and Fu, I'll probably take the break statues off my shelf and replace them with these Max Factory Figmas. 
because yeah, the detail is great, good posability. This is what I've been wanting for over two decades. And finally, I got one out of three. Hopefully things with the pandemic will calm down soon enough where I can feel confident to plunk down the money I need to get the other two. For now, I'm just happy to finally have Hikaru Shido, the figure of her I've always wanted, in my possession.